good to see a face, man. It's good to put a, put a face with a name. Um, but hey, you guys, we want to get started. It is seven oh seven, and really, the um, we're live. We're live on Facebook and YouTube now. We just went live, and so I want to welcome all of our Facebook friends, our YouTube uh, video uh, uh, friends, and and if we're live on WWT uh, Channel Six Facebook. Welcome everyone. This platform was really the motivation was to create some positive energy around solutions. As we look at dealing with some very complex uh, challenges that's in front of us, uh, that will include Black Lives Matter, will include this uh, insidious virus called COVID-19, uh, we talked about education, economic empowerment, police and community relations, and the list goes on and on. And, and so we wanted to create a vehicle that will have uh, discussions around what's our way forward? How do we get there in the midst of the storm sometimes, right? And so with that, we wanted to I'll I'll let um, Julian Bond, uh, not Julian Bond. Julian Bond is my bass player out of KC. <laughs> Julian, but Julian Young, he's an entrepreneur, uh, educator, a family man. Uh, he's he owns several businesses. Uh, the Start Center Omaha, uh, which is a not-for-profit arm of what he does, but also he's a owner of uh, I I think is probably one of the best scooters coffee in this side of the Mississippi, right there on 30th and Ames, uh, is Scooters on Ames and, and uh, his beautiful wife, Brittany and Julian, they're owners of that. So I'll let you uh, uh, share a few words, Julian, then let's go ahead and get into the conversation. Uh, we'll, we'll introduce uh, Anthony Goins and Robert Blackwell Jr. And we can get, we'll get this uh, game on, but we'll get this party started. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, um, Tim, I want to just really thank you, man, and congratulate and celebrate you on uh, this this wonderful um, kind of think tank platform that you're creating with uh, moving people to action. And so um, I think anytime you can get what they call the meeting of the minds together, um, and you can have critical discussions around what we can do to move the economic needle um, with, within the African-American community um, is powerful. So thank you for providing a platform. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be a part. Uh, there's really no need for me to introduce myself. You said yeah. everything. I want to welcome everybody who's here. Yeah. Uh, the, the main thing I want to say is really... Um, that from a broad spectrum approach, there's a few things that I know as Tim and I discussed what would really be the angle of pursuit in terms of this particular town hall. And, um, you know, I think one of those things is that as we talk about the importance of what's going to be the new way forward um, in terms of Black wealth, Black business, Black ownership, and just the overall cultural landscape in Black America. Uh, as people are tuning in tonight, the, one of the main things I really want to ask is that you understand the importance of why we're addressing this and why it's so important that as a community, we make, make certain shifts now. Um, and when I say shifts, I'm talking about paradigm shifts. Um, and, and conversations that have been our center of gravity for some time, we need to kind of investigate uh, those conversations that we have as a community and understand how do we shift it to a conversation that is centered and anchored on economic empowerment and building wealth. So it's not just about the what. I really want people to listen closely tonight because I think uh, that Tim has assembled a, a lineup of experts that are going to say a lot of things that are extremely important for you, but I just really want to ask people to hone in on the why. Why this is so important for us as a community, why it's important that we make the shift now, 
not next year, not two years from now, right now, uh, in my opinion, the black community is in a very critical space where we have got to change the conversation that uh, is really the center point of our community. And I think tonight you're gonna be able to draw from a lot of different people who know a lot of different things, have a lot of experience, um, a lot of in-depth knowledge, expertise, a broad range of, of perspectives and experiences. But one of the main things I want to encourage viewers tonight, we want you to be encouraged. We want you to be motivated. We want you to uh, ask questions. I think you might have the ability to do that here at some point, but just be engaged at the deeper uh, impact and the understanding of why this is so important. And we get our grasp around this conversation on economic empowerment, doing business together, doing business uh, as a community and why we need to make that shift right now. Right on, right on. Thank you, Julian. Yep. Hey, let's jump right in. Uh, let, let's start off with, um, and we'll have an opportunity for our viewers to get to know some of our guests. We'll put your websites up and your bios and things like that uh, on our on our on our website, so people can get to know you. But I want to jump right in. Let's let's start with Anthony, uh, Anthony Goins, and, and and this is kind of inter. We're going to uh, interconnect this. Uh, Robert as well. In terms, of, so feel free to jump in as we get this you get this di dialogue started. But as we look at you know um, Anthony, in terms of just with your role as the economic development uh, director for the state of Omaha, and really just in a lot of your experiences at being a businessman, you're a business owner. I want to thank your company for being a sponsor tonight, Capital. Uh, Cigar Lounge, thank you guys. But let's at a high level, how can we really, we say it, but really how do we do it when we just say, okay, the people are rising, <laughs> let's do business. What does that look like? Anthony, why don't you, 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 you kind of lead us into this conversation? What does that look like? To, to say, well, let's just do business. Listen, I'm, I'm going to give you the short version of just do business because I am a disciple of Robert Blackwell Jr., so I'm going to let him give you the long version. Okay. But <laughs> what I will say is that as Robert and I have talked, and I met Robert through uh, our governor, Governor Ricketts, a lot of the issues that we have, they're specific to social, really center around economics. <clears throat> and the fact that for a very, very long time, Black folks have been shut out of the economic boom, if I may use that term. So from an inclusion standpoint, we, we've been left out. Now, a few of us have been able to, uh, to penetrate and break through. But at the end of the day, our goal is to, as Robert was stated, cool the free market economy. The system works for everyone. And in doing business with Black businesses at scale, you allow them to hire more black folks and hire them more than just a livable wage, but hire them at a wage that allows them to take care of their families and allows them to uh, uh, take care of themselves and live a great life. I mean, the bottom line is if you have economic choices because you make enough money to have those choices, then you have a greater level of influence. And a lot of times your economic choices also gives you an opportunity to have a seat at the table. So I'm gonna speak more to my role as, as the lead of economic development for the state of Nebraska. What I can sincerely tell you is that our governor is behind a movement to say that we need to create economic inclusion for all Nebraskans, including black folks. And so you will see a number of initiatives that will be launched here very soon that will create that, that, that economic inclusion that will give us the opportunities to uh, have a seat at the table and give us the opportunities to, to make money in a manner that is, uh, that is on par with uh, our peer group. What I will say is that in order for us to do that, <clears throat> we have to be ready. And what do I mean by being ready? I mean, being prepared, meaning you're gonna hear me talk a lot about having, having clean books. So what does that mean? That means your financial statements, your cash flow statement, your, your P&L, your balance sheet, all of the elements around how you present 
your financials to a banking institution need to be cleaned up. And we recognize that that's a challenge for a lot of black businesses. I can tell you as a business owner myself, it's, it's been a challenge for me, um, but I've, I've got some great people uh, that are working on it. Uh, Connie Edmonds, who, who is the principal of her own accounting firm, uh, has worked diligently with my business to make sure that I have books that are, are clean and that are ready. And I think every business needs to have it. So there's a Just Do Business Foundation that has been uh, a subsidiary of the Do More Good. Jay Wilkinson of Fire Spring runs that. And what I would tell you is that we will have funding and we will choose five to six black businesses uh, that are entrepreneurs and wrap services around them and, and help to subsidize those services so that they have a strong foundation. And those services will be accounting, legal and HR, uh, and marketing. And we'll help to subsidize those services because as, an, as, a, as a beginning entrepreneur, it's, it's fairly difficult to be able to pay for those services up front when you're trying to focus on moving your product or service. So, so in, in your whole, you know, um, effort to, you know, move people to, you know, do business, uh, what I'm hearing, Anthony, is there is a component that, or recognizing that there needs to be some, you know, assistance in terms of capacity, uh, aiding folks in terms of that, that whole thing of helping them get there with the with books, counting and some of those capacity yeah there, there needs to be i mean I, I, there needs to be some assistance there but i do want to make i do want to make this clear that at, at the end of the day uh just do business is a movement that says that listen you take real accountability for what you're supposed to do you do the studying you put the hard work in and you 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 create a a company that has a clear present value proposition understands how to differentiate yourself in the marketplace and really take great care of customers. That, that's, that's the headline. Um, what we do recognize is that when you, when you may not in the beginning have uh, enough upfront capital to hire a CFO, a chief marketing officer, a chief legal officer, and a chief HR officer. So we want to find ways to wrap those services around uh, a few businesses upfront um, with the intent that at a point in time you move yourself to the to to a to a better situation so that you can handle those functions yourself right on right on so so robert um uh, you know you know you, you you you're the kind of the father of you know just do business um you know g g give us your take in terms of just what you've heard uh, Anthony, talk about and and how do you can expand on that? Well, uh, in my little funky apartment here in Chicago, I've got my little Anthony shrine. Most people, uh, it's it's hidden, but it's there. Uh, I have to tell you uh, that I have committed to move into to Omaha, and it is because of uh, Tony and all the great people uh, that he's introduced me to. You're one of them. I saw, I think Carmen Tapio is, uh, was on the uh, call as, as a participant. I would tell you just the black people that I have met in Nebraska, uh, to me, just amazing people. So I grew up in Southern uh, Nebraska, AKA Kansas. <laughs> okay. So it's like my, uh, my little neighborhood. So, but, but seriously, I have found people to be really responsive. A lot of people of all races to be, I would say, people of goodwill. And I've been able to have this conversation about just do business. So why do I think just do business is the way for us to solve the challenge that we have? If you have to ask yourself this question, where, are the, where in the world are poor people healthy, educated, and safe? The answer is nowhere. Conversely, where are affluent people, regardless of their race, not healthy, educated, and safe? I think Michael Jordan may be wealth, as wealthy as anybody on this call. I think he qualifies as black. He doesn't have a problem with his personal safety, probably with his health, and for sure not the education of his kids. That is because he's been able to participate in the free enterprise system. So 
the idea is if we need to prove that the free enterprise system works for everybody, because those that frankly have benefited from the most in this country, which are whites and Asians and others, uh, those people are who are on the, let's call it top of the economic ladder, we're on the bottom. Uh, my grandfather was an immigrant from Cuba. So if you've ever been to a, a communist or socialist country, you appreciate how much better that we have it here. So what I've been, I actually met Governor Ricketts at the Republican Governors Association because I went to them and say, listen, two things, you guys better pay attention to young people's fascination with socialism. And number two is you need to pay attention to black people. Um, so that's how I met uh, Governor Ricketts and I happen to know his brothers because they own the Cubs. Um, but I want to say, we need to start with what we want to get accomplished. Mm -hmm. The question is, what do we want to get accomplished? If what I think is, if the black people participated in the economy in proportion to our talent and population, life would be better. And we ought to figure out what that means. There's no reason why black people should be at the bottom of everything. So, and it's actually not black people that are the bottom of everything, it's Blacks, Americans. The least educated from a gr college graduation percentage is American Blacks. The most educated, most people think is Asians, but it's not, it's actually Africans. So we're at the bottom and the top in that category of, let's say, uh, of achievement. Nobody can argue that in the entertainment industry, which we participate in, we have we tend to dominate that category. Rap music, unfortunately, is the top genre in the world. And to me, um, some of it's good and some of it's awfully vulgar. Um, but if you ever go watch like a rap, you go watch a video of young gangs, one thing that you will see is these are smart kids, they tell people to stay away from this life, but they also, every one of them wants to be a rapper. That's because the market has told them that's where to place their bets. So if we were trying to, let's say, build muscle, let's say that we were gonna be athletes and we gotta go from being 175 pounds to being 225 pounds full of muscle in order to make the NFL or whatever, People would say, go to the gym. Just go to the gym. You got to hit the weights. There's a proven formula for building muscle. That's eating, sleeping, and lifting weights. There is a proven formula for taking people from poverty to prosperity. In about 20 years, India and China took 750 million people out of poverty. That's double the population of the United States. In 10 years, India took 300 million out. And that's because their government started doing business with their entrepreneurs, and then American business started doing business with their entrepreneurs. And that industry that they got a hold of, which is tech, has changed their economy, and it's created aspiration for their young people. So I've asked people this question probably a thousand times, Said, name two famous black entrepreneurs that would be nationally known that don't have anything to do with entertainment. Almost nobody can name them. They're starting to name Robert Smith now after he gave that money to Morehouse. Now some people know who he is. But outside that, it's really difficult. And that is because we are real, nobody does business with black people. That's why we are where we are. And in order to fix that, we need to get people to just do business. And that should be, in my view, the message. Just do business, that's step one. Do business in a non-pass-through category because a lot of times people want credit for getting big numbers. And if you want credit for big numbers, what you can do is you can just pass through lots of spend with no or low margin. 
And that is where a lot of our larger companies are. They're really just gigantic pasture engines. So for oh, instance, okay. um, FedEx wants to be on the billion dollar round table. They're gonna buy a billion dollars worth of fuel for Exxon. They stick somebody in the, in the middle. They, I'll sell you a hundred million dollars. I want you to sell us a hundred million dollars of fuel that's gonna come from Exxon. And by the way, you get to make $250,000 on that hundred million. That is really how the industry works. So kind of in closing here, what are the steps we need to take in order to move our people forward? Advocate for people just to do business. And so I've created something called the lead partner program. The way the lead partner program works is to say to the company, just do business preferably in professional services or something like that, because in professional services, all you need is capability and a customer. Then the black companies have three responsibilities. One is to identify a clear value proposition, because if you can't do that, you can't be in business. Number two is since you've got the benefit of this opportunity, you should take responsibility from bringing somebody else along. So mm -hmm. make a smaller company a part of your deal because in our, what you find in our businesses, anybody who's made it is old. I was, there's a incubator in Chicago called 1871. It was started by a bunch of rich white guys so that they could have a shark tank and they could look at deals. And I'm on that, I was on that board originally so they're looking at deals from 20 and 30 year olds. We, we talk about people in their fifties. We got to create a pipeline of young people in my view that get into industry. The next thing is how do you create social capital? Social capital is when you reach back and you pull other people along, but more importantly, you create an aspirational roadmap for your young people so they know where to place their bets. So in our case, we've helped start a number of small black IT companies. I've uh, supported something called Mowers and Blowers, which is essentially microfinance for landscaping because when there's grass on the ground and snow to move, there's money there. And the last thing we're gonna do is something I call the Housing for Tutoring Exchange, where we give honorable black college students a place to live in exchange for mentoring and tutoring elementary and high school students and helping seniors. We have so much vacant property in our neighborhoods. So after you've done the social capital, you reinvest the wealth and you figure out what new categories that you can dominate. So kind of last thing is, this is just my view. We, got, we have to advocate for one another. Advocate for one another, number one, and then do business. It's not enough just to do business because if you've got little companies, you do a little bit of money. We got to advocate and get people of goodwill to come on this journey with us to prove that the free enterprise system works for everybody. So they need to do business in a meaningful way, not 100, 500 million deals. So they create some fake programs, you know, one, five, $10 million deal, things that are absorbable, absorbable, if that's the right word. And then we get a lot of people to do that and now all of a sudden, we've got lots of business, lots of money, people can grow organically. Uh, and the last thing I wanna say is not everybody's meant to be an entrepreneur. Uh, I, in fact, I've never, met an, I've never met an entrepreneur that came out of an entrepreneur renewal uh, training program. What I've seen is people who have figured out how to be in business. Now, this is just my own experience, so I'm not knocking it. But if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you got to understand, just like when you go to gym, they got this saying, no pain, no gain. Right. A lot more pain in being an entrepreneur than gain. You have to be comfortable with risk. You have to look past yourself, not look at yourself because nobody cares about you. They care about themselves. So you got to figure out as an entrepreneur, what problem can I solve for you? And the last thing is black men. Black men are the only men that make less than their women. God bless our black women. But 
black men need to take responsibility for black boys. So why I think, and I'm really excited, frankly, to meet you all, to go on this journey with you all, because we cannot leave this world with us not doing something to leave something better than we inherited. Our parents and grandparents did a lot for us so that we could benefit. A lot of us have benefited from what they've done. I don't think our kids have benefited from anything that we've done and we need to change it. So anyway, thanks for our, thanks for the time. No, that's wonderful. That is absolutely incredible. Um, I actually wanted to ask a couple of follow-up questions to sure. things that you mentioned. Uh, one of the things that you talked about was uh, the clear value proposition or unique value proposition. I was wondering, and I'll ask two questions and hopefully uh, both you and, and uh, uh, Anthony will, will kind of give us your insight here. Because I know there's some people that are logged in that um, A, they're probably in business and never really discovered what that is. <laughs> um, and then two, there, there's probably people that are listening that can't seem to get over whatever the barrier, entry, barrier to entry is for them to start their business. So two questions. One is, if you could go into a little bit more in depth, just what a clear value proposition is or a unique value proposition, what that is, why that is so important to their business. And then second, um, what do we say to somebody that's here, they're listening um, on the, on, 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 on the um, town hall tonight, they have no connections. Um, they have, you know, they feel like they're starting from scratch, just like most people, just like I'm sure everyone here has had to. What are some things that we say to them to get them through some of those barriers where they feel like, I don't, I don't have any connections to break through, what, what do we say to them? So a little bit more insight on the clear value proposition and then some, some, maybe some, some things we can give to people that are starting from scratch that are trying to figure out how to, how to make it happen. Okay, I can uh, take the, the first one. And if you go that business is about solving a problem that somebody's willing to pay for. Right. If I come to you now and I say, hey, I'll give uh, I'll sell you a black shirt. Well, you can say I already got a black shirt. I don't need that. But if I need to figure out for you how to solve either an emotional or financial problem. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you have well, I'll use my own case. So I have a daughter and my daughter was affected by autism. So more than anything in the world, I wanted her to be, I had to focus on her education. So I live here in Chicago. We lived on the South side. I knew there were no schools over there in the South side where my daughter was going to get the services that she needed. So I got a house in Wilmette where the Ricketts family lives. They went to the same school. Now I had to spend a lot of money, but there was nothing more important than that. So if somebody were to come to me and say, your daughter has got autism, we can help change her life. Here's how. Give me a hundred grand a year. And by the way, in that case, I'll live in the basement. <laughs> I'll sell my cars. I'll do whatever I have to do for her. That's love. So that's solving an emotional problem. The other problem you can look at is from a financial perspective. So let's say that I have a, a customer, and that customer is worth potentially $10 million to me, okay? You got a connection to that customer. You can go and tell that customer, you know, Robert's not a bad guy. Their company can do X, Y, Z for you. I know you spent $100 million. Uh, you ought to take 10% of that and do business with Robert. Now, if you come to me and say, hey, Acme Corporation, I've already talked to the CEO. I think they'll do a million dollar, $10 million worth of business with you. You know what I'm gonna say to you? How much money you want? Mm -hmm. You can say, hey, it's gonna cost you, one is you're never gonna get that $10 million without me. 
And in your industry, cost to sales of, of client acquisition is about 15%. Tell you what, you give me a million, I'll take care of the rest. What do you think I'm gonna say? There's your million dollars. And I'm happy to give it to you. Let's do that four or five more times. So a really clear value, in that case, you would be my customer. You're solving, in that case, a financial problem for me. Mm -hmm. When you go to businesses, you have to do the same thing. You've got this problem, I can help you make more money, or I can help you save more money, or I can help you eliminate risk. That's what my business is about. I can make your customers happy, your employees happier, some problem that they're willing to pay you for that's different from what the other guy is going to do. Now, by the way, if there's seven of you and they can make the same introduction and another guy will do it for 50,000, I'm not paying you a million because it's not differentiated. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Now, the last thing is the second part of your question was, what happens if you don't have any relationships? Mm How -hmm. you get started? Mm -hmm. I'd say money follows opportunity. It is almost, in my view, it is almost impossible not to be successful if you are fanatically determined to be a winner. And different people have different skill set. I believe God blessed everybody with some kind of skill. Mm -hmm. You need to figure out what you can be world-class at and what the market problem is. It's not that hard to meet people. You could say, I own, I own a table tennis company. You could say, hey, I've got a manufacturing thing. I can do that for 30% less. You find me on LinkedIn, I can solve your problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the likelihood is I'm going to take a meeting with you. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of ways to introduce yourself to people. That's not the hard thing. The hard thing is in 30 seconds to say, this is what you can trust me with. Mm. I can solve this problem for you. And it's a category where you can trust me. And if I believe that I can trust you, I'll try you. That's how most people get it. Unless you're related to somebody super wealthy or you're born into something, but that's not what happens with most people. Most people fight their way through to getting what they want. It's like I like Tony and Kim. <laughs> Listen, you have to think about sales and uh, anytime you meet somebody, sales is about building a relationship of trust, telling people what category they can trust you in. And if they trust your character and they trust that you are relatively smart, then almost it's really hard not to get an opportunity and to get it. But you got to be ready. Mm -hmm. To answer your questions? Yeah, absolutely. So if I'm listening right, I'm hearing and you're saying they got to bring that unique value to the table before they go try to get that opportunity. Is that right? That's exa it's exactly right. Never yeah. waste the meeting. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I, I tell a quick, my wife and I are the first African-American franchise owners of a Scooter's franchise, or Scooter's Cause. Right. Sure. And uh, all we did, uh, <laughs> I just picked up the phone, man. There you go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just picked up the phone. I saw that, hey, these guys don't have any stores in the black community. Um, I'm sure if somebody presented the opportunity, they might be interested in it and the unique value wasn't necessarily what I could, you know, they already had a successful multi-million dollar business. But I think the unique value was saying, we think that you're missing out on a great market and community to do business. And I remember one of the first meetings I had with the uh, founder, CEO of Scooters, I said, hey man, how come you don't have any stores in the hood? You know, um, and he, he laughed at, he laughed at that question, but he looked at me and he said, Julian, um, I suppose that's why you're here. So the reality is people don't realize that opportunity was there. Um, and I get people all the time to say, man, I was thinking about doing that. Well, I don't doubt it, you know, but you didn't take action. So um, that's a great, that's a great the, example, by the way. By the way, you know why he doesn't have any, why he didn't have any stores there. Right, right. <laughs> so you, you said, 
I know this guy doesn't know there's an opportunity there. Right. I'm a good guy. I can solve a problem for you. Yes. Let's do business. Yes. Yeah. You guys know coffee. We know the community. So let's do that. Uh, Anthony, your take on those questions, just diving a little bit more into the, the, the importance of that clear value proposition and uh, people that are trying to fight their way without any connections or relationships to kind of break through. Well, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, Robert said it best. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, they don't, you know, I'll, I'll just reemphasize one point, and that's really differentiating yourself from the competition. I mean, you got to, and, and, and the other element I'll talk about is are the people you surround yourself with. Because at the end of the day, you don't do this by yourself. You have to be maniacal about talent. You have to be maniacal about making sure that you bring people along that share your value system and that are aligned with the mission and the vision that you put in place. You, you have to make sure that you do have values because at the, at the end of the day, your, your values drive your behaviors mm -hmm. and your behaviors drive your outcomes. I always say, if you think about Christianity, at the end of the day, if you are a Christian and you proclaim to love Christ, then your behaviors are different. And what the data shows is typically your outcomes in your life are much better based on your behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so you got to put people around you that can support that value proposition. Mm -hmm. And it's about a team. Yeah. You know, when Robert and I met, it was, it, I, I knew this was going to be my kindred brother. I already knew it because mm -hmm. we had aligned values. And everyone that we have associated ourselves with around this Just Do Business movement have the same value system. That value system is really synonymous with trust and loyalty. And that trust and loyalty helps to create your brand. And like Robert said, when people, when you have a reputation of being trustworthy, of having a brand that says that I subscribe to excellence and I subscribe to winning, but I do it in a way that, that exhibits the highest level of humility. Because here in Nebraska, humility is important. You don't have to, mm. let me use my, my grandson's word, you don't have to floss. Mm. You care about people, mm -hmm. you care about them deeply. When people know that you care about them deeply, then they're more endeared to you. And so you have the opportunity to build those relationships because you have exhibited a brand based on your value system and the philosophy in which the way you live your life and this is a small community. Mm -hmm. All communities are really small. I mean, they're just microcosms of a larger community, but word gets around. I mean, people talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did I hear about Robert? I heard about him from the governor. Mm -hmm. So the governor's family must have felt as though he were a he was a trustworthy person. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they wouldn't have made the introduction. So to Robert's point, it's not difficult to build relationships when you build a really strong foundation about who you are, the way you present yourself, and you do it in a manner that shows that you truly care about people and that you are exhibiting the highest level of excellence. I'll give a clear example. I got an email about you from Tom Osborne. Mm -hmm. I responded right away. Tom mm -hmm. Osborne co-signed for you. Mm -hmm. Five minutes later, I get a text message from Tim Clark about you. We never met before. Mm -hmm. So they, they've already co-signed for your brand. And I think you and I are meeting next week. Yes, absolutely. Oh, by the way, then Tony told me about you too. That's right. Oh, that's, right. <laughs> I, I, that's right, absolutely. So that's a really easy example of how a relationship start. Mm -hmm. And Julian, I mean, that wouldn't have happened if you were not a man of character and if you did not exhibit a value system that would allow Tom Osborne who is God in Nebraska to co-sign for you. Mm. I can drop the mic on that one. <laughs> yeah, the other thing yeah, I say, would... say, <laughs> Save me a, a cigar. Uh, uh, the, sorry. I Tim got to pass the hat around. Yeah. Hey, hey you guys, you guys, um, I know we could spend a lot of time. You know, I think the conversation has been awesome, but we do have some other panelists that are waiting in the gallery to to jump in and have some conversation as well, and we and we're 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 we're, we're having folks in the chat, uh, Robert and 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 um, Anthony, they're asking questions. So if we can just okay. as we wrap up this, Julie, maybe you think of one thing, but we're going to do a little speed dating. You know, you're going to have less than thirty seconds hmm. to kind of hit these questions real quick, so we can get some of these things in terms of 
in 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 really kind of just in in the um where we want to do is move to action kind of thing so one of the questions is this how do we get more black folks to move to that middle class and so look just just somebody react to that as i look at the next question okay just how do we get how do we, you got 30 seconds and we got to uh, just answer that okay okay how do, my how do we move more black people to the middle class do business that creates economic opportunity they hire more people and when you're in the modern parts of the economy people make more money there you mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. my okay. third seconds is roberts was geared towards entrepreneurship mine is going to be geared towards corporate america and, and and i use myself as an example work hard be the best student you can be study your craft and understand the detail build relationships mm -hmm. and move through the ranks when I left the United States Marine Corps, my very first job in corporate America, I was a security guard. And I wore my security guard uniform with creases just like I wore my U Marine Corps uniform. Somebody recognized that maybe I would have some potential and gave me the opportunity to be a credit authorized at American Express. Somebody gives you an opportunity to deliver more than what is expected. Mm. Make sure that you, when you have, when you when, when there's a conflict, you conflict in the right way. You don't conflict by putting by, by going out on Facebook and, and, and creating all kinds of drama. You conflict by having a conversation. When you do those things very well, doors will open and you can move yourself up to the middle class. And that was my route. And what, what do you recommend for as tools and resources? I mean, I, I know you, I hear relationship, meant, how should they go about getting there? Well, I mean, it's, whatever your craft is, you have to study. I mean, there's there's no... There, there, there's no magic pill mm -hmm. for being able to to get to get knowledge and information. You, you you have to study. You have to surround yourself with people that understand the area that you're trying to focus on, and and you have you have to work hard. Yeah, the, I, I just add to what Tony. <coughs> pardon me. Bless what you. Tony said is there's a marketplace. You got to understand what the marketplace is, and when you're young. You need to get out of school learning how to read, write, and reason. That's it. Learn how to read, write, and reason. You don't need to be teaching, you know, fifth graders entrepreneurial classes. You need to teach them how to read, write, and reason so they know how to think. When you get out of school, whether that's high school or whatever it is, figure out the market is always looking for winners. It is almost impossible in this country if you give 100% not to be successful, no matter who you are in this country. Look, if at least I can afford my little funky apartment, so that proves anything's possible here. 